close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch the breath all the way in, all the way out. Try to be mindful to keep staying right here. In other words, keep reminding yourself. You want to focus the mind on one object and make it a pleasant object. Years back when my father was visiting me in Thailand when I was studying there, I wanted to be sit and meditate with my teacher. And his first question was, well, he was a Christian, would that be an obstacle in his meditating? My teacher said, no, because we're focusing on the breath. And as we focus on the breath, we get to know the mind. Now both the breath and the mind are common property all over the world. There's nothing Buddhist, Christian, or anything partial about the breath, partial about the mind. We want to learn how to see our own minds, get them under some control. This is a virtue for all of us all over the world. We look at our lives, and what do we accomplish in life? If you look for accomplishments outside, the ways of the world can wash those things away very easily. But if we look for developing good qualities in the mind, that's where it's somewhere we can, we can have some control. But you need to get the mind under control first, so they can develop good qualities like virtue, or generosity, renunciation, persistence, goodwill, equanimity. All these things that in Buddhism we call perfections. These require work, but it's good work. It's work that focuses inside, because this is the area where we do have some opportunity for some control, and where our happiness can be solidly based. So you're developing mindfulness, which is the ability to keep something in mind. And you're developing alertness, watching what you're doing, watching the results of what you're doing. And then a third quality of ardency, trying to do this well, because you know that the more you can get some control over the mind, the more you'll be able to direct it in the direction you want it to go, the more you'll be able to develop good qualities inside. So if you catch the mind slipping off, you bring it right back. And to make it want to stay here, try to breathe in a way that feels really comfortable. You can try long breathing for a while to see if that feels good. If it does, keep it up. If not, you can change. Shorter breathing, fast, slow, heavy, light. See what the body needs right now. This way you train the mind. At the same time, you create a sense of well-being in the body, which makes it easier to stay here. Why is it so important to stay here? Because your intentions are happening right here. And it's your intentions that shape your thoughts, your words, your deeds. And all too often, we're not here. Decisions are being made and we're off someplace else. And then we wonder, why is it that our actions don't get the, give rise to the happiness we want? Well, it's because we weren't there making the decision. We were there only half there, not paying full attention. So learn to ground yourself here in the present moment with a sense of well-being, wanting to be here. And you'll see your mind a lot more clearly. And when you see it, that's when you can see, oh, an unskillful intention has come up, I should say no to that. A skillful one has come, I should say yes. This way you're more in control. It's like being the, the owner of a factory. If you don't go to the factory every day, every day, who knows what decisions are being made on the factory floor. You have no control over the quality coming out. But if you're there every day checking up on things, the workers will have to work diligently and they have to do their work well. And you can begin to guarantee the quality of what comes out of your factory. Our minds are like factories, so make them a good factory. We're not simply here on the receiving end of what other people do. We're making decisions. We're shaping our lives through our decisions. So train your mind so that it can make good decisions reliably, so you can guarantee the results, guarantee the products that you're putting out from your factory. That way you benefit, the people around you benefit as well. And you find that your life has purpose. If you look for purpose in things like wealth, status, praise, those things come and go. And they don't provide any real satisfaction. But if you look for your satisfaction in qualities like generosity, virtue, renunciation, discernment, goodwill, those things provide satisfaction. So train your mind well so that it can develop these good qualities. And you find that your life has a really good purpose that you're willing to stick with. 
and happy to stick with.